Hello everyone, it's Vanessa. I did not mean to be gone for this long. I started working 40 hours again at the library, doing curbside and back of the house stuff. We've been doing a whole inventory of all of our materials and I'm in charge of like 16,000 items. So thankfully I had people helping me with that. Um, we also officially opened to the public this past week and that's been just very tiring and just a whole new world to get used to. So I didn't get a lot of reading done this month um, compared to the past few months when I've been reading like 20 or more books. This month I only read 13 which is still a great number I think. Let's get through all the books that I read in the month of June. I started the month with two five-star reads which was super exciting. So the first one that I want to talk about is Saigon by Phuc Tran. This book is a memoir about Phuc Tran coming to the United States from Vietnam, being raised in a very white small town in Pennsylvania to really want to assimilate and to be one of the kids that he was surrounded with so he wanted to be into punk rock music and skateboarding so that they would kind of not see him as other as Vietnamese as you know a symbol of this war that was fought 20 years prior it was just an amazing memoir probably one of my favorites that I've read in a really really long time I listened to it on audiobook he's just so interesting he's like a tattoo artist and he likes punk rock music but he's also really into like English literature, how he sees himself through the books that he was reading in high school, basically. So a lot of it has to do with all of those books that are like required reading in high school, fitting in and friendship, a really complicated relationship, especially with his father that was honestly abusive at times. And the fact that he was just so honest about telling that story, all the racism that he experienced growing up in the 80s, kind of also the ideas that people had about him as a model minority of being Vietnamese um, being Asian American. I devoured this audiobook. It was almost like 12 or 13 hours and I finished it in two days. I was just so invested. The next one that I read that was so, so good that I also rated five stars was Dragon Hoops by Jean Luen Yang, which is super exciting because this was in my five star TBR prediction from I think December. So the fact that it actually was five stars made me so happy. What made this five stars to me is how complex and big it is and it's just this huge story, this big undertaking that Jean Luang Yang did. He was a teacher in California and he followed uh, the basketball team at his school. And they're a Catholic school that has uh, a lot of kids come to it because of their very good basketball program. So it kind of follows these kids throughout that whole year as they're trying to reach the championship to win it for all of California for high school basketball. You learn about the kids and their own backgrounds and their own families. That made it really fascinating too because it's all of these kids who would never if it wasn't for basketball have been to the school probably and just learning about their backgrounds and how they got into the sport what they think about their coaches and their teammates i just love basketball stories and i love like championship run stories i love documentaries like that where you're kind of following the same group to try to get to the championship and win so that was really really great and that's why i love this book so much and i'll show you what it looks like inside so his style i also enjoy and there's lots of action and just imagine how much how long it took him to do all of this after that i finished a kid's memoir and it's free lunch by rex ogle i listened to this one on audiobook it was one of the books from project lit that i wanted to read and it's following a kid who grew up really in poverty and had to get on the free lunch program at his school it's kind of all he did to try to make it seem like he wasn't on the free lunch program and what that made him feel like his very complicated going off of saigon his complicated relationships with his parents as well especially his mother. His mother was a very um, aggravating person to kind of follow. You can kind of see that she's just been beaten down by the poverty that surrounded her for all her life and the only really great thing about this book is the interaction between Rex Ogle and his grandmother. His grandmother was so kind to him. My heart was sad reading this book. I'm glad that I read it and it was one that I wanted to get to because of Project Lit. So the next book that I read after that is a YA book that I've been very much anticipating. It is Kelly Yang's new book, Parachutes. I also listened to this one and it's a thicker one. It's almost 500 pages. I really enjoyed this on audiobook. It was kind of like Saigon that I was so invested into it and I couldn't stop 
reading and listening to it so i also finished this one in like two or three days even though the audiobook is pretty long in this one we're following two girls one who is coming from china and is kind of like a foreign exchange student at the school we're also following another girl whose family has been in the united states for a bit um, but they are immigrants as well her family cleans houses to make ends meet and then they take on this girl coming to live in their house as another way for them to make some money and this girl that's coming from china is a very very wealthy you're kind of seeing like the juxtaposition of those two things but the thing that unites them and the thing that really moves the story is how they experience sexual harassment and sexual assault so there are you know trigger warnings for this story for sure it's hard to read at times especially how people in authority teachers talk to girls and kind of like the given of what boys think you know girls should give them and what makes this even more impactful for me is the fact that kelly yang wrote this because of her own sexual assault that she faced while she was going to harvard at a very very young age she ended up going there like in her early teens that also you can tell influences the story i really enjoyed this book and i totally do recommend it as well i loved learning about both danny and claire in this book i almost forgot this book i read towards the beginning of the month and it's all boys aren't blue this is a young adult memoir that i also listened to on audiobook and and it's by George M. Johnson and he really wrote this book for queer black teens although I feel like anybody could get something from this book but for him it's he felt like he didn't have his own like guide or a manual or a manifesto as he calls it of how to deal with certain issues including um, generational trauma, sexual assault, understanding his identity and trying to figure out who it is that he actually is when it comes both to gender identity and to sexual identity. One thing that I really loved about this book is how his family comes across in this book because they are so kind and accepting of him and that was never like a problem. It was all of the other outside factors and institutions that were more of a problem to him. I also really enjoyed in this one learning about black fraternities. He was involved in a black fraternity and kind of like the brotherhood that that created, especially as someone who doesn't fit like this idea of what a fraternity brother should be like so i really valued those stories as well there's a story in here that was really hard to read uh, about him facing sexual assault so there's definitely trigger warnings in this one as well for those topics but i understand why it's so important he's basically opening up himself to queer black teens to tell them you're seen and you know this happened to me as well and it's okay. I had to clear up some space in my camera so here we go. The next two books that I read were graphic novels. The first one was Snapdragon which was such a surprise. I was so excited reading this book and I read it mostly in one sitting. This follows Snapdragon who is really into animals and especially like animals that are down on their luck or about to die or taxidermied. She's kind of into semi gross things and for that reason she doesn't really fit into this mold of of what a girl should be like. All the people around her really don't care about that, which I found really refreshing. She makes friends with somebody in her community who also takes care of animals are about to die or then creates them into taxidermied things that she sells online. It's about them kind of starting this relationship and business and how the older woman is teaching Snapdragon how to take care of animals. There's also this part in the story where like a lot of things convene and like history kind of meets snap in the face and i found that interesting as well to kind of see how the author illustrator made these connections between relationships in the family and this old lady that snapdragon is now hanging out with and talking to i definitely would recommend i also really just enjoy the illustration style um, these like googly eyes and very cutesy drawings and then the other graphic novel that I finished after Snapdragon was one that I've been anticipating for a really long time I know that it's available online but I don't want to read it online I would like to read the physical copy and that is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman this is such a beloved like part of internet culture at the moment and of course I've been looking forward to reading it I really enjoyed seeing this relationship develop it's very cute the things that I enjoy about this is how like every day and like everyday activities it feels like. They're just like doing regular things, going to school, playing sports, you know, watching movies, and just the way that the relationship develops very slowly, the way the faces are drawn, it's so cute. I mean like this style just warms my heart and makes me so happy. And you can tell like the way that it's done, uh, like the author illustrator is really learning about the medium. So that also made it really endearing to me. But definitely as cute as everybody says, I'm so ready for the next one whenever it is released. The book I read after that 
is one that I've had out for a while. I hadn't gotten to it and then a lot of people now are on hold for it. This book is Anti-Racist by Tiffany Jewell. This is a juvenile nonfiction graphic uh, kind of work. It's very beautiful inside. Let me show you some of these illustrations properly. I love the illustrations. I really enjoy how it is all organized by chapters. And then the most interesting and insightful thing to me was these like kind of prompts and activities that basically are in every chapter. So you're able to, after you learn through that chapter, you're able to kind of ponder how those things that you learned in that previous chapter have to do with your life and how you view it. Here's another example of the activities. So pretty much every Every chapter had that and I actually really took advantage of that that was my favorite part about this book I wrote a good 10 pages just me answering the questions and like pondering the activities so that's the thing that I valued the most about this so the kinds of things that are talked about in this book probably want to know that are identities and what they mean what is race what is racism prejudice history of all of this how to actually do things so how to take action how to interrupt what it means to be in solidarity how to use your privilege i think the way that it is structured it is easier for children to read than like stamped the remix version that just came out that i read recently so this one feels like i would say more digestible for younger kids um though stamped the remix version i think is also very important the next thing that i read was this really short comics collection called go to sleep i miss you by lucy nicely they're just little comics about different subjects having to do with having a baby so kind of like them going to sleep, them eating, how she sees her own body after giving birth. It was a nice short quick read, kind of like a nice palate cleanser and like I said when I uh, posted a picture of this on Instagram, I'll just read anything that Lucy Nicely does because I enjoy her work. After that I read Five Days by Westmore which has been one of my most anticipated books of the year. It was actually pushed back because of COVID but it was finally released and I listened to it on audiobook. It's a book that follows the five days after the death of Freddie gray after he was in police custody and had a really rough ride on purpose by the police and then ended up in the hospital with really really bad injuries and then he died as a result of all of that and it's following those five days through the eyes of eight different people from Baltimore and the author decided to follow uh, you know like a protester who's been involved with Black Lives Matter before Freddie Gray um, because of her brother her own brother's death in police custody also following like a public defender who helped a lot of protesters get out of jail and you know just meet the bail and stuff like that a cop and like like what their experience is like, a business manager who was part of like the skating rink that um, a lot of people in Baltimore really cared about, the son of the owner of the Orioles who's kind of like in charge their decisions with what to do with the Baltimore Orioles games during all of these protests. So it followed all of these different perspectives of different people who were there on the ground during this time and how they all saw what was happening in these five days. The book is only 320 pages and I think my biggest issue with it is the fact that since we are following eight very different people and there's not very many pages and each chapter is really short it takes you to the next person really quick it felt really difficult for me to like feel like I was really going in depth with the people that we were following I also felt like some people had a lot more story to tell and I wish we had gotten a lot more from them like for example Tawanda Jones who's the Black Lives Matter protester that I talked about and she's kind of was a leader in Baltimore after her um, own brother was murdered at the hands of police. You know, we didn't really follow her as much as I feel like was warranted. So I kind of wish that like, some people had a lot more say in this book than they did. So I like this book, but I didn't love it and it didn't meet my expectations, sadly. Also, there's this whole bit in the end where it's kind of like a plea for racial justice and just criminal justice reform. And while that's all true, I just feel like it didn't need to be an addendum at the end of the book and it would have been more interesting to see it through the voices of the people that were actually following instead of like from the point of view of the author. I don't know, I think this book was just okay and I gave it three stars and I kind of wish that I liked it more. The book that I read after that I was also very excited for and I also gave three stars to and that was Fire in Paradise by Alistair G and Danny Anguiano. This follows the campfire, first it follows the history of the area and like how paradise the city became a thing and 
then it follows what that morning was like before things started happening and then what happened after the fire really like got out of hand and how people tried to escape it follows too many people kind of like the same problem as the last book that i just mentioned this one is also a very short book less than 300 pages and that just didn't make me feel like i understood each person and what they were suffering through there's definitely a few people that come up again and again but then there's a lot of like players in the background that you only hear about a few times and you don't really connect like who's who and what happened to them and where exactly they were when this all happened i think just the writing in general wasn't anything that was like super impressive to me so I liked it, didn't love it, three stars. After that, I read another graphic novel and this one also kind of disappointed me. I gave this two stars. It's The Phantom Twin by Lisa Brown. This follows a circus, like a traveling circus that um, shows off freaks. We have people who have like alligator skin. We have like these, the twins who are conjoined and that's who we're mostly following. A woman with lots of tattoos, which I guess is really strange to them from this time period of, I wanna say like the late 1800s, early 1900s. And it's about one of the twins wanting to do a surgery to kind of separate themselves and the surgery goes bad and one of them becomes a ghost that is following the other twin. There's like love interests in it, the one that remains trying to find love the ghost twin they don't really have like a great relationship or like a, a profound moment that made it, this make sense so i didn't really love this book and i was excited because i like the art the one i read after that was uh also a great one and it's beach read which has been a very anticipated book for many people this year i listened to it on audiobook thanks to libra fm and i really enjoyed my time with it sometimes when i read romance books i usually like the female character but the male character is just okay he's kind of like just there for the love and that's when it really felt like i got to see these two characters their backstories their conflicts that they were going through and how coming together can really relieve and help and you know make them feel better and to move on from past pains i also think that this book has really great chemistry between these two characters and the banter between them especially i think is really pulls you into the story and it makes you root for them and it makes all of their first really exciting their first kiss their first sexual interaction it made all of those things great because you really enjoyed their chemistry and their banter with each other from the beginning listening to other people's reviews about this it's you know about a romance writer and like a literary fiction writer and how they swap stories to see how hard each other has it and i feel like that's not really what it's about this is really about is a really interesting relationship to see develop the first time in a long time i'm not shuddering as i hear sex play out as i'm listening sometimes when i listen to romance novels on audiobook i'm just like next chapter please and this one it didn't feel that way just because i love the character so much and i wanted them to get together this one i finished a couple days ago and that is clap when you land by elizabeth acevedo i listened to this one on audiobook it's in verse so definitely i wanted to listen to it on audiobook so this follows two sisters as you can see from the cover they do not know that their father basically has two families and then their father passes away in an airplane accident Accident. It's about the sisters talking about their lives on their respective towns that they live in, one in Dominican Republic and one in New York City, and then them coming together as they're grieving their father and laying him to rest. It's seeing these two sisters through their everyday struggles. I also really enjoyed how women really stand up for each other in this book, um, especially women in, in families, and how people can let go of grudges for the betterment of you know teenage girls i thought that that was also lovely and something that sometimes i don't see happen in my own hispanic family so i'm happy for that and this book did make me smile i think i like it less than the poet x but i like it more than her last book before i go i want to talk about two things that i've read so far in july just because i have one of them and i need to return them to the library so one of them is city of ghosts by victoria schwab i read this um, for something that i'm doing at work i did end up enjoying it more than i've enjoyed some of other victoria schwab books that i've read in the past i think i've read two this is her middle grade book and it does follow ghosts basically the main character kind of is in the in between where she can see ghosts but also she's still alive her and her family going to scotland i'm um, going to edit where they are filming a TV show because her parents are really involved in like paranormal and like ghost books that they've been writing so now they're turning it into a TV show it kind of goes from there there's ghosts and there's like a big bad that she's trying to defeat while she's in Edinburgh I found this book really 
easy to read, spooky in parts, which is really good. I would say that like the first third is more exciting than like the latter parts. I did enjoy the relationship between the two girls who are in betweeners. And then the last thing is one that I just finished today that I have to return because so many people are on hold for it, and that is New Kid by Jerry Craft. And this is a book that I started and tried to read maybe a year ago, and I just wasn't quite in the mood for it. It wasn't really speaking to me. And so I set it down and then it won like a bajillion awards. And then I was like, okay, I know I have to pick it back up, but when? When was today. I honestly really enjoyed it. I'm glad that I gave it another chance. Maybe what was bothering me or what I wasn't getting into is that I didn't really care about the main character that much in like the first 30 pages, but then it really gets in the swing of things and you really grow to love the main character and then just seeing the relationship between the two main characters as they talk about these microaggressions that they're facing in their school that is mostly white i felt like it was super sweet in the end too just like those last five or so pages really got me and i was like oh this is cute it also has really fun puns at the beginning of each chapter so like a christmas story a Kwanzaa story, The Farce Awakens, Radman, and I found that really fun too. I know that there's going to be another one in this series that follows Drew, who is becomes one of his friends in the new school, and I'm excited for it because I really enjoyed Drew in this book. This is a great book for my graphic novel book club too, whenever we're allowed to meet with people in person again. I definitely want to do this book for kids in my graphic novel book club. So I'm glad that I read it and definitely do recommend if you haven't given it a shot. Don't be like me. That is it for my wrap up for all of my June reading and a little bit of July. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about these books. If you've read them or if you want to read them, let me know and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.